three, two, one. Hey everyone, I'm Mumbalua. I'm a beauty and wellness content creator based in Los Angeles. Ooh, and I build power in women. One of my 2022 goals was a makeup no buy. <laughs> And listen, of course, it was something extravagant like the Pat McGrath bronzer that I've been waiting for for a while or the long-awaited and anticipated Pat McGrath Mothership Tan Palette that we expect this year. It is currently January 56th and It is still January, and that's one too many Mondays that I can account for, and I've lasted long enough. So, I went shopping. I have some interesting beauty spree finds, and baby, I have thoughts. Dry girls, come closer. I've got the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation and the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. Everybody else, go home, because you had your moment with the Lisa Eldridge Foundation last month. <laughs> Just kidding, stick around, but don't let the subscribe button punch you in the face. Before we dive into the foundations, no part of this video are sponsored. No paid partnerships, no free products, zilch. I enjoy all parts of my skincare routine except the toner step. Anyone? No? Okay. I've tried only but a hand few of popular ones, all the way from the ordinary to Ren Skin, I think it's called Ren Clean Skin Care. They're just so stingy. Like my skin would suddenly become raw, but skipping AHAs, please. It could never be me. <laughs> I'm about to introduce you to a game changing toner. And this one by Laneige called the Laneige Cream Skin Toner and Moisturizer. Oh my God. Okay. So you know how you put on your cleanser? I don't know how you cleanse your skin. I'm more than happy to show you guys how I cleanse my skin, but you go on with an oil cleanser, you know, to get rid of the makeup, depending on how much you're wearing. But I always do a two-step cleansing step process in my routine. So I go over with an oil cleanser and then finish off with my actual cleanser. And then I proceed to tone my skin to make sure that I have a little extra of the makeup that I may have possibly forgotten about or maybe just not gotten during the cleansing process. And I also like to use that to just clean my skin and get rid of that extra dead skin that has formed um, throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout God knows how long. So a toner is extremely important to me in my skin care process. However, it can be a very painful step for me, you know, going from a cleanser, especially if your cleanser is drying and you've got that stiff tear like sensation after you have cleansed your face and you go over with a toner that also just makes it feel like your skin is extra raw because you have acids that you're applying onto your already stripped skin. <laughs> I accidentally discovered this and this was actually a sample in one of my Sephora purchases and I tried it on my skin. I had to buy the full bottle because it is that good. I don't normally discover things like that. I usually listen to like, you know, people talking through the grapevines. I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna give it a try. And if I don't like it, I'm not gonna talk about it. If I like it, well, maybe I might just say, you know what, A and B and C and D spoke about this and I loved it. And so I'm joining the bandwagon. This was a self-discovery and I am obsessed with this Laneige Cream Skin Toner. This is not leaving my skincare routine anytime soon. I love it. <laughs> Imagine the look on my face when I discovered that you could have a two-in-one toner that tones your face and hydrates your face at the same time. And that's exactly what this Laneige Cream Skin Toner and Moisturizer does. I'm very happy right now because every time I wash my face, and if you guys didn't know, I use the Dermalogica Micro Daily Exfoliant to cleanse my face every day because I tend to have, I wanna say like, whiteheads or poor fill-ups in this area and also my chin area as well. And so ever since I switched my cleansers, I go back and forth between the Tatcha Gentle Cleanser and the Dermalogica Cleanser, you know, 
alternating day by day, I found that that has fixed my problem in as far as having that little problem, you know, my chin area and also um, this area around my nose. It's perfect. Perfect. I'm happy about it. Moving on, I am so excited to be sharing with you guys the NARS, the new NARS foundation. It is called the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. It looks like this. I typically wear the NARS Natural Radiant Long Wear Foundation in the shade Iguaku. And so I went into the store and I picked up the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation in the shade Iguaku as well. I'm very curious to see what these two foundations compare like to see if there's any color differences because looking at them in the bottle, they do look like this looks a little darker and this doesn't. So I want to see if that is the case because then we would potentially, possibly have a problem. And I'm going to be using a concealer brush just to kind of spread it. I know I'm wasting the product, which I really hate to do. And then I would go in with my finger and I would apply that. Let me know if you guys see a difference. Essentially, they look the same to me. I don't see no differences whatsoever. I've had the opportunity to play around with the NARS foundation ever since it has launched, and I didn't want to post this on my channel. So on the Sephora website, the color Iguaku is described as deep with neutral undertones and an olive undertone, which to be honest with you, that is the exact description of my skin tone. I'm very neutral toned because I have the perfect blend of red and yellow to my tone, but I definitely feel like I have a olive undertone beneath my skin tone. And so when I pick out my foundations, I always look out for something like that. I can't go completely red, but at the same time, I also can't go completely yellow, which puts me right in the middle, which is a neutral undertone. But I do prefer a very nice golden hued foundation, which makes it look amazing. I am wearing the NARS light reflecting foundation on the right side of my face because I wanted to show you guys how this has looked and I've been wearing this now for at least 14 hours and it has not separated. It actually looks pretty beautiful. I started my day very early and it is approximately 1130 at night. I am just about ready for bed but I wanted to come on here and share this information with you guys and to really tie this foundation month in its true complexity, I wore the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation on the left side of my face as well to see how that performed. Also, so both of these foundations are, I want to say light. They both recommend that you wear them like you would a skin tint. They both have a medium coverage as I had discovered after testing them, they don't quite give full coverage coverage like the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation would or the NARS Radiant Foundation would either. So they're kind of in between. So they don't quite compare to the Fenty Beauty Skin Tint or Huda Beauty's Glowish either, even though all of those do carry some form of coverage. However, both of these foundations are medium coverage. I would say they're not heavy wearing when you apply them to the skin, they both finish quite great and they don't feel like you are caked in makeup either. In the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin, I'm in the shade 16 Cool. And I do have to say that there is maybe one, maybe two shades after me for the Charlotte Tilbury Skin Foundation, which to date, I'm surprised, 36 shades for this and maybe just about or even less for the Charlotte Tilbury. I don't know what women after me are wearing because I definitely know that there is a huge variety of women after my complexion 
who still would like to try out foundations of this nature but are not fitted into the complexion category that these brands provide. However, I was able to match myself in the shade 16 Cool, which I also thought was strange because I would never really consider myself a cool girl considering that I am very warm toned to the touch. Not necessarily warm, golden, but I do have some warmth to my skin tone, which is why I fall in the neutral category and especially for fall in the neutral olive category as well. So with Charlotte Tilbury, it was very interesting to find that the shade that matched me closest was actually 16 Cool. And I do remember my dear friend at the Charlotte Tilbury store here in Los Angeles actually having a laugh with me because she did agree with me that this foundation shade in particular doesn't necessarily fall in the cool category. And I will show you guys in just a second if I do a little swatch and you guys can see after applying this that this does not reflect as cool. It actually has a little more golden hue to it as you guys can tell than it does more cool to it because cool would definitely lean more towards blues and purples and this definitely has more of a golden hue to it which sits perfectly on my skin tone as I am wearing it on my left side. I did notice that the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation does have a very sticky serum like texture to it and I've had problems blending it on my skin with my fingers even though that is how I did want to apply it on my skin considering that it is more of a skin tint like finish as compared to to a typical foundation and I do prefer to test out foundations with my fingers so A I don't waste the foundation and B I'm able to get a feel of the texture of the actual foundation. Now comparing the two foundations and I love my NARS foundations would I pick one over the other? Probably not because I still feel like they're not in the same category even though they still are compared to each other given that they there are supposed to perform in the same manner. The Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin has a more luminous base compared to the NARS foundation, which is supposed to be light reflecting. So the NARS foundation doesn't quite finish off as a luminous foundation, but instead it does tend to lean more towards a matte foundation with a glisten to it. So for somebody like myself with a drier complexion, this is a little it's not a bummer per se, but if I had to pick one on a day where I'm feeling extra dry, I am going with the Charlotte Tilbury foundation over this NARS light reflecting foundation. Heck, dare I say, I am going with the NARS radiant foundation over the NARS light reflecting foundation. And it would all depend on what day it is and what I am going for. But since I do like a very dewy and luminous looking foundation on my skin, the Charlotte Tilbury foundation for this month of January takes the cake. Also, the Sephora website describes the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation to be a deep with cool, rosy undertoned foundation, which essentially anything rosy could also dabble back and forth. It was just very interesting that they called this very cool, when it is a very warm foundation essentially at the end of the day. But all in all, I can find purpose for both or either foundations for each given day. Not to say that the Beautiful Skin Foundation is not a good foundation. It's actually pretty great. It did a good job at covering everything that I needed to cover, not that there's anything to cover. But the um, Beautiful Skin Foundation provided that extra luminosity without me having to work extra hard at me adding illuminators or just extra products. And I thought it was a very beautiful finished foundation. When you compare blendability of the two products, I would say that the NARS foundation was able to blend a lot better with my fingers. And of course it did a phenomenal job just spreading out with the beauty blender. And the Charlotte Tilbury did not quite blend pretty well with my fingers. I struggled a little bit as you can tell in this footage and I had to right away grab my beauty blender and help me spread it into the rest of my face. 
I also purchased the NARS reflecting powder, which I also thought was an interesting addition to their collection. You can't see it from here, but it does have some luminous specs to it. It's also a light reflecting setting powder. It is a pressed formula and not a loose formula. And I did not pick up the loose powder because I tried it out in the store and I have several powders in my collection. I just felt like I had several of that kind already added to my collection and so I skipped out on it. Maybe when and if Sephora does decide to go on their VIB sale, I might consider picking up the powder, the loose powder that is, and add it to my collection. But for now, I feel like I already have similar powders in my collection and I just don't need that many. And I don't think that I will be able to complete the powders that I have in my collection currently. I was interested in trying out this powder to see how it performed on my skin and I wanted to see if there were any light reflecting powders on it. I am a huge, huge fan of powders as you will see pretty soon as we go deeper into this video. But before that, I wanted to share with you guys the Huda Beauty Overachiever Concealers and this is not new to Sephora. However, just because a product is not brand new at Sephora doesn't necessarily mean that you don't shop the product and you only buy the newly released product. So I have never tried the Huda Beauty concealers and for the first time I wanted to try them out because I have heard great stuff thanks to TikTok on account of how much coverage these concealers provide. So I'm wearing the concealers under my eye currently and I have to say that they sort of in a in a very understated way remind me of the Kevin Aquan concealers that I love so much because they are heavy, thick, pigmented concealers and I use them underneath my eyebrows to give me a highlighted brow and at the same time, I also use these concealers to brighten my under eye and these concealers don't move. I feel the same way about these Huda Beauty concealers because like I said, I've been wearing this makeup now for at least 14 hours and I haven't needed to touch up my makeup at all. I haven't touched up my makeup and I don't seem to have any visible creasing per se, even though I know I do have somewhat of some kind of tight skin. But every now and again, at every given point in my day, I do blot and touch up the powder under my eyes so I don't have creasing of any sort. But I haven't needed to do that, mostly because A, I wanted to come on here and be authentic about what I've done with my makeup. It has not moved and I actually genuinely wonder why it's taken me so long to pick up these concealers. I picked up the shade Hazelnut 32G and I picked up Chocolate Chip, which is I think her deepest shade in her collection, her concealer collection. And I used that in the perimeter of my face and I used this for the brightening purposes of my makeup look. So I used it under the eyes, I used it on the bridge of my nose, around and underneath my nose, as well as on my chin and forehead and I feel like for the very first time I haven't been intimidated. I'm not a makeup artist, but I'm only just starting to understand how makeup works and what undertones to slap onto my face. And I can definitely tell you that Hazelnut is a beautiful concealer to add to my complexion because it is very neutral, not scary. And when I put it on my face, I am not overwhelmed by what it looks like because I hate more than anything a yellow or orange undertoned concealer underneath my eye because because I feel like it just makes me look very sick, to say the very least. I never spelled it. On the Sephora website, hazelnut is described as a rich with golden undertones and chocolate chip is described as an ultra rich with red and slightly blue undertones. So I feel like somebody of a complexion like Nima Tang or my Southern Sudanese girls out there living it up and representing our melanin 
melanin skin tone would potentially be able to find a concealer in this concealer range but i feel like they would not be able to contour with a concealer in this range because lately i've been enjoying using concealers to highlight and contour the perimeter of my faces as well so i've been spoiled enough to feel like if a brand is able to make a highlighting shade for one particular skin tone they should be able to make an equivalent and contour shade that would show up on that person's skin tone as well so if they can do chocolate chip i feel like they could go past chocolate chip at least two to three shades past chocolate chip so huda beauty i do love you but <laughs> I feel like you can do if there's somebody I count on in as far as pigment and complexion products it's you girl and I feel like you would be able to deliver you and of course my dear girl Rihanna in the Fenty range but Fenty is a conversation for another day I also picked up the KVD powder foundations and these are in the shades 200 220 and 225 so this kind of seems like a lot and almost seems <laughs> wasteful however here's the thing i always recommend that when you go in to please dollar for dollar all things considered should be the disclaimer for this portion of the video i always recommend that when you go in to buy a powder foundation it is important if you want your makeup to come off as seamless and put together that you buy a powder that is brightening and a powder that is your all over shade powder i always do that sometimes i never really go into the store with the intention of buying both powders and unless perhaps maybe they are on sale. But I use powder foundations to set my concealer first and then go over with my loose powder to brighten my under eye. I find that my makeup doesn't move when I do it that way as compared to just going in directly with my loose setting powder. I also buy the all over face powder is essential because it helps blend out any lines or uneven blending that you have throughout the face the brightening lines with the contour lines, the contour lines with the brightening lines underneath the eye, and the same thing that goes with the forehead and the contour or the bronzing lines that you have. When you slap on your all over face powder, it actually brings everything together, making it appear as if you have a uniform tone and there's no way of telling what's bright, what's contoured, what has been bronzed and what hasn't been. So what I typically do is I go in and set my concealer with a powder and that powder is always several shades lighter than my very own complexion so in this case I picked up the shade 200 in the KVD powder and then I'm actually the shade 225 which is a very accurate description of my own skin tone and these powders I have noticed tend to dry down or at least set darker than they actually are which helps in a little bit so when you are shopping for these powders I would consider that because they do oxidize. And then I picked up the shade 225, which is in the shade Rich Deep, because sometimes in the summer months, I do like to look a little bit darker than I actually am. So I have that nice bronzed, complex, deep complected look. Irritates people because they just don't like a deep complected woman. And I just love to rub it in because I love my skin complexion. I did the same thing for the Fenty Beauty. I can't seem to find my Fenty 450, but I did find my Fenty 470, which is this shade, which is my all over face powder. I do use the shade 450 on and off, just like I do use the shade 450 as well in the colder months, like I'm using right now. It might be in a purse or something like that. And once it starts to get warmer, I start to pull out the shades 470 for the liquid foundation in the hydrating foundation, as well as the powder powder foundation as well because it starts to complement my skin a little bit more. I like to look darker in the summer months. I also conveniently picked up the shade 498 which is Fenty's deepest complexion powder foundation product because I use this for my eyes to 
cut my crease because lately I've been wearing a lot of brown around my eyes. I've been using that as a transition shade or I've just generally been wearing just a nice deeper brown um, complected or just a deeper brown eyeshadow. That's what I've been reaching for lately considering nobody's really wearing makeup. The masks are not coming off anytime soon. And so when you have to go to work, go to the store or whatever it is, just pop in a nice deep brown around your eyes just to give that little extra edge and call it a day so I bought this to pop it around my eyes I also found that this works phenomenally around the perimeter of my face because this tends to give me a more bronzed and saturated look in the hotter months of the year I live in California after all and so it just adds this nice beautiful look to my complexion and so it's very pigmented kind of unfair actually Actually, that I can rock this kind of complexion product but blended perfectly well you can see that this finishes amazing into the skin and I can get away with wearing this as a bronzer and or a contour I kind of just feel bad for the other ladies that don't have a product past this point to be able to use as a contour themselves but in the world of makeup you kind of have to be smart and creative because I myself <laughs> struggle with this same thing and when I do find myself in that predicament I tend to reverse contour you know and just brighten my cheek lower cheek area to make it appear as if I have contoured my face but you see just playing with that a little bit I was able to make that disappear into my skin that means that essentially I could play with that in the perimeter of my face making it look more like a bronze and it would still look beautiful another powder example that I am currently loving is the matte so I did the same thing I use the NC 45 underneath my eye and in any areas that I'm ready to set and brighten and I use the shade NW 48 for my all-over face complexion and that seems to do the trick for my complexion and it sets so beautifully so when it comes to pressed powders you guys let me know if you want me to do a video on pressed powders so I can share my favorite pressed powders what each and every single one of them does and I'm more than happy to add that to my list of videos that I intend to do for the year 2022 oh another press powder that I am obsessed with that I had to purchase again was the Dior press powder so this is my new Dior press powder in the shade 8n and this is my exact complexion shade I don't know if you can tell I love this complexion product it's probably one of my favorites in my complexion also I I used up the one that I had before I actually got rid of it during the holidays and I had to get a new one just recently and this is also one of my favorite pressed powders and so I don't know how I would be able to compare this against the KVD because this one tends to be a little bit powdery but this one is a little bit creamy but tends to finish off actually a powder or powder no powder foundation so it's very creamy powdery but not powdery at the same time Bruh. there's no actual way of explaining it but it's actually a very beautiful finished foundation and it is by Dior and again I'm in the shade 8n I also picked up the setting powder from rare beauty in the shade medium because it was the closest to a beige setting powder which I prefer underneath my eye for brightening purposes I like I mentioned earlier on in this video I tend to stir clear away from yellow or orange setting powders for my complexion specifically because they may brighten my under eye but they tend to leave a hue behind but because of my undertone I'm more comfortable with something a little more beigey underneath my eye or underneath the lower part of my cheek as well I like this setting powder testing it out over the last few weeks I find that it may not compare to the makeup forever setting powder which is extremely blurring or even a thick setting powder like Huda Beauty's setting powder but it's still very luminous it's very soft and also <laughs> honestly I was looking at the back of this product and I didn't realize that it was made in Italy and this may be a very branded thing to say but anything made in Italy it's perfect perfection so I love this setting powder as you can tell I use it under my eye it looks beautiful I will be reaching for it just so I can give you guys a complete 
roundup of what I think of the powder in general, but so far so good. I actually really love this powder. There weren't so many exciting and new palettes in Sephora when I did pop in to pick up a few makeup products, but I did realize that I did not have the Huda Beauty chocolate brown palette, and it's this little tiny palette, and I thought to myself, now that I am, you know, leaning more towards a very neutral brown bronzy look as I'm warming up for the spring and summer part of the year, I thought to myself, this is the perfect addition for me to add to my collection at this point in time. I actually don't have any of the Huda Beauty nine pan palettes in my collection. And I thought to myself that this would be the perfect time to add this to my collection. So I'm actually wearing this palette on my eyes right now. The shade that I'm wearing as a transition shade in the corner of my eye is this beautiful brown chocolate shade. Like I told you, I've been shopping around for the perfect brown shade for a deeper complexion woman like myself. And then I popped this in the inner corner of my eyelids because I thought it would just add that perfect little pop of color, but I'm not wearing that on my eyelids during the holidays. I actually discovered the Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics Shimmer Top Coat in the shade Frozen, which is a very bronzy color. And it's not part of the purchases that I made this January, but I did want to share with you guys what I was wearing or what I am wearing currently on my eyelids and I thought oh, it's beautiful it's stunning and I needed to share this with you guys let me see if I can just get a nice little swatch for you in there so you can see what that looks like it's stunning the formula is creamy. It's almost like a fat, juicy, mouth-watering, <laughs> shimmery color that is just perfect to pop onto your eyelids. And I actually love that. So paired with the Huda Beauty Chocolate Brown Complexion Palette, which is not new to Sephora or to Huda Beauty herself, but I waited this long. And if I can wait this long, and I think it's been around for maybe a year, maybe two, maybe three, who cares? You know, that is the whole essence of makeup. If it's still available, you don't necessarily have to buy it once it launches. You can take your time, let it simmer, let it sit, let it go on sale, and then make the purchase. And that's exactly what I did for this little palette. And I'm so excited to have this and add this to my collection because it's beautiful and it's an everyday wear easily. I also picked up the Danessa Myricks eye toppers as well. I'm not sure what, they, what they're called because I actually already threw out the boxes, but I watched a video on TikTok of somebody using these on their lips and poof, mind blown. My God, it was in this shade. And I'll find it in just a second. I'll share it with you. It was this purple shade beautiful, stunning color. And I haven't quite figured out how to use these quite yet, because to be honest with you, there aren't very many fun nights out because at the end of the day, 2022 is just really 2022. Get it? <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I have no intention of putting these on my lips per se, unless otherwise, because that's typically generally not my look. But for a crazy night out, if I'm looking to pizzazz the hell out of my eyes, I'm not afraid to pop these into my eyelids and just, you know, create a very dreamy and very foily look because they are very glittery and in a very adult kind of way, not in a very childlike way. They do get very messy. So you have to be somebody who's very responsible with glitter and who has lots of control because you can go from having one pop of glitter onto your eyelids and it's everywhere. Are you guys in trouble? Yes, Daddy. Showing you guys the products when I opened the products, I had so much glitter everywhere because again, I was being quite irresponsible with the way I was showing the product, even though I did try to be very careful. But at the end of sharing the product with you guys, I found that I had so much glitter everywhere and it can be annoying. So I would say just be very careful with this product in general and make sure when you do pop it onto your eyelids or your lips that you are careful or it may potentially ruin the rest of your look in general. Another product from Danessa Myricks that I picked up was this 
do wet balm in the shade hot water. She has a clear one, a non-glitter one, and then she has this very bronzy shade, I guess with coppery glitter to it that I thought would complement my skin tone a little more. I do like a very balmy, a very wet makeup look every so often, to be honest with you. So I thought that this would be just a nice little addition to my collection. I will always support Danessa Myricks because I have so much respect for her given the journey that she has carried with her up until this point in time. She has been in the makeup industry in fact, her brand has been around, I think about 20 years and she recently only picked up momentum, I believe in 2017 and she is doing phenomenal things. I'm a big fan of her color fixes. And to be honest with you, let me show you. I have a big bag of her color fixes with me, all kinds of colors, all kinds of shades and I use them to pop them in you know, my eyes. I use them to pop them in in my crease. I use them to pop them on my lids. And every time she launches something that I haven't used before, I reach out for a Danessa Myricks product because I am a huge fan, just like I do with Pat McGrath or Charlotte Tilbury or Patrick Ta, because all of these artists are makeup artists who started from scratch and went on to create something phenomenal. And they could be just as big as a Dior, an Estee Lauder, and you name it. And so I picked up hot water, which I did pop in my right here in my cheek area to just give me that nice dewy look. And this is exactly how I applied it. You know, I just popped it right in my cheek area, used my fingers to just dab it into my skin. If you want, you could pop this product right onto your eyelids. You could use it for your lips just to give you that nice dewy glowy look. And it really adds that extra, you know, wet look without having to look like you are all greased up. And it has these beautiful coppery spectacles that just tie the look together. Lately, the one thing that's been missing from my collection, or at least that I feel like has not grown over the past few years since I've been obsessed with makeup has been blush. And I've made sure that I have compensated the best way that I can, as long as it complements my skin tone. So I picked up a few blushes that I did not have in my collection, starting with this Makeup by Mario blush that I know everybody has been raving about. And it looks like this, it's very deep in complexion. It's a nice plum berry shade. It looks like that. It's stunning on the cheeks. I didn't wear this today, but I'm excited to see what this looks like when I actually do put it on. I do want to set this up in a very luminous, dewy look. Perhaps maybe throw this on top of the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation and just kind of go off of that wet, steamy, hot, wet look for the summer but it's a very nice juicy formula and I did try it on in the store mixing it like that it actually looks really good with deeper skin complexions and I thought it was fabulous I also picked up Rare Beauty's latest blush this was the deeper complexion of the mauves that she released and it's in the shade Believe but I thought to myself she has always had faith from her original launch of these blushes and I thought to myself you know what on a deeper skinned woman like myself, Faith might actually pull as mauve or more mauve than the color Belief, even though both of them did show up on my skin when I did try them out and test them out and they were very beautiful to the color. So I also added these two to my skin tone and I thought, stunning and I will show you guys in later videos what these actually look like on my complexion. I also picked up Glowish. So it took me a while actually to <laughs> spend $23 on a product of this size. But then I thought to myself, you know what, at the end of the day, with the number of blushes that one carries, especially in today's consumerist culture, I think this might be the perfect size blush for anybody today. So I thought to myself, you know what, I'll give Glowish, Huda Beauty's Glowish a little chance and I will buy the deepest shade, which is the shade Charming Cherry in her Glowish collection for the blushes that she had released. I was very hesitant to spend $23 on a blush, but I finally just decided, you know what, who cares? 
I'm doing it because I really wanted to test it out and try it out for you guys. And when I did swatch the product in the store, I thought it was a stunning pink on my skin. And I thought that looked so good. It was so hard to resist that color because it looks amazing. It actually looks pretty phenomenal on dark skin. You can't tell. And I will share what I'm using on my skin right now, which is what I'm currently obsessed with. It's very pigmented and I'm very excited to play with this to see how this actually works out on my skin tone when I do finally play with it. I do have the Buxom blush as well that I did pick up. I did order this one because it's not available at Sephora in store, but I did order this online as well. And it's very very similar to the Huda Beauty's Charming Cherry as well. And so I will also be, as you can see, there's a trend here. I do love my pink and purple and deep complected blushes, you know, and I was looking for something of that nature because that's really traditionally what I wear. When I do go off the rails, you know, from time to time, I'm going to let you guys know. But for now, those are the colors that I thought were flattering to my complexion. So I added that to my complexion as well. What I am wearing on my cheeks though, is the Laura Mercier in the shade Sangria and Jesus. <sighs> I think this was perfectly described. It has orange to it, it has pink to it, and it has a very subtle purple color to it. When you wear it on the cheeks, it has a very trio iridescent look to it. So it is multicolored. It's not just pink, it's like pink with orange. But then again, you look again and it kind of looks like it has some purple to it as well. And I thought it was such a beautiful blush. I had to have this. I've <laughs> essentially, I've ignored this for some time. And finally, I decided, you know what? If I'm adding the glowish blush to my collection, might as well add the Laura Mercier blush to my collection also. I also picked up Huda lip complexion, tried it on and paired it with the Huda Beauty Lip Contour 2.0 in the shade Rich Brown. And I paired it with Huda Beauty's latest liquid lipstick in the shade First Class. As you guys can see, I tried this on and I tested it and I thought it was a very juicy, berry, mauvey, red, brown toned lipstick, which I absolutely loved and I've been leaning more towards colors like this for my everyday look. The tests and the speculations about the lipsticks are actually accurate because the lipstick does not smudge. I've actually spent some time throughout the week trying different lipsticks and they've actually stained my glass, except this hasn't. I've actually drank and laughed and talked and kissed and played. I just had the time of my life and it is absolutely smudge proof and I've actually enjoyed this product. The final product that I did pick up was these Inglot gel pots in the shade 90 and in the shade 77, which is basically a very dark brown and a very black eyeliner gel because I've been practicing my eyeliner or my winged liner because that's one part of my makeup technique that I am lacking in. I'm not very skilled at that and so I'm learning to do that. So I figured between the pencils, the gels, the liners, and the gel pods themselves, it's been very difficult for me to actually master a technique that I am obsessed with because my eyes are actually downward pointing. And so when I do draw my eyeliner, it tends to look a little sallow. So I've been practicing the bat eyeliner look just so I can have that beautiful, if you know what I'm saying, you know what I mean? Look, just so my eyeliner looks great when I look down and when I look up as well. And so when I've actually mastered that technique, I'm so excited and happy to be sharing that with you guys pretty soon. And so I'm just trying different formulas, different techniques, different brushes, because practice does make perfect. Like I said, I'm not a makeup artist and I am just a makeup obsessed person. And I've been experimenting with different products and collecting and adding things to my collection. I'm 
also very excited about how this year is going to pan out. I have a few goals that I've set in mind. I've got a few videos that I would like to create regarding this beauty and wellness channel. So if you guys have any more additions or content ideas that you would like to add on to our growing family, please let me know in the comment section down below so we can keep this channel moving. I am so happy that you made it to the end of this video. Kisses and love. Bye.